Hello everybody, welcome back to another Nervous Reviews. Today we're going to be doing the first Stephen King book that I'm ever going to review, ever. This one, later. Now this is the most recent book that Stephen King has released and it's one of those hard case crime books. So it's one of those short books that's uh, almost pulp fiction-y. So you can see this book as, you know, very similar to Joyland, and very similar to Colorado Kid. They even have those printed on the back. So I'm gonna be reviewing that with this in mind. I have in fact read both of these books, so I know my hard case crimes. First off, my personal thoughts on this is that this is actually such a fun book. I did not expect to enjoy this book as much as I did. Now there's the other two books, Colorado Kid and Joyland. Colorado Kid, I remember I reviewed and that actually got a, a bunch of views for some reason because not that many people talk about it in such a positive light. I really enjoyed that book. I thought it was a super fun book, even though it didn't have much of a plot, it was just engaging enough that I enjoyed it. However, Joyland is the other side of the spectrum, where it felt like it had a plot, but the plot was just meandering, it was meaningless, and I felt like every action that was taken was boring. This is exactly the same as Colorado Kid, but different in a couple of ways. Remember that divide that I talked about before, where one has no plot but an engaging story, and the other has a plot but no engaging narrative behind it? This is sort of the mesh of the two, but in the best way possible. This story has the absolute best plot that I've seen in the last maybe five years from King, while at the same time having that emotional narrative behind it that always makes me enjoy it, and makes me want to come back to the story constantly. One other review that I did that got a lot of attention was The Outsiders. And even now, I'm, I'm not sure if I enjoyed as much as I said I did, because obviously at this time, I'd only read a couple of Stephen King's books. Now I've read a lot more, but that one, I enjoyed it. And the interesting thing about that is that that's one of those really big books that a lot of people really enjoy. I see a lot of people calling that one of their top five favorite Stephen King books. And I can't say that about Outsider at all. This one, on the other hand, could possibly be there. This book has a plot, just like The Outsider and just like Joyland. However, it does have the emotional resonance of Colorado Kid. It does have that edge to it that always makes you want to come back for more. And I think that he's really, really peaked the style very, very well. Like this one is a hard case crime. So it's supposed to be this thriller, uh, detective mystery kind of a thing. Not exactly that, but you know what I'm saying? Mystery, uh, pulpy kind of a, a story. And it nails that right on the head. Like it should be, it does feel like a pulpy story. However, at the, on the other hand, it really feels like a king story a really strong King story in the same way that you would read a lot of his other books, where it has that character in it and that very odd way of describing people, but this odd way is also one of those great ways that you really get into their head and feel how they're feeling. So it's a very interesting mix between all of these different styles that you wouldn't normally see together. Now, the beginning for sure is the best part of the story. There's no doubt about it. There was a really engaging plot point right at the start that involved a writer that was super, super interesting just because, you know, my interests course. Uh, so for me, that was a super fun, enjoyable ride. And I, I thought that like there was a good 50 to 100 page section of that where I was just breezing through because I just thought it was super fun. And I know not everybody's going to enjoy it for the same reasons as me. But even though I thought that the writing was great, that specific plot point was the coolest thing just because of how I related to it. That being said, the beginning was definitely better than the ending. Um, maybe it was just because of my personal interest, but I thought the beginning was super engaging while the ending leading up to the specific climax, it was cool and all. Uh, maybe the people who didn't really enjoy the beginning as much as I did would find that they're all just about the same because I mean, realistically speaking, they do seem the same. But in my opinion, the ending was a lot less compelling just because of the beginning of how much natural interest it held. It's, it's really difficult to describe this, but this is really the charm of King. It's that he writes something that interests himself. And by doing so, it's this thing that you wouldn't normally find yourself interested in. And despite that, it draws you in. This author story that, you know, maybe I wouldn't really be interested in, it kind of had that charm to it, that natural interest that made me want to go into it further and maybe want to really, really continue, despite the fact that the ending had an objectively more exciting plot and a more upbeat, interesting story going on. The beginning, it did have that sweet charm to it that I can't really explain. And I think that's the best way to describe this entire book. That King charm, to any degree, doesn't really go away. And I, I think that's what I really loved about this book. There have been a lot of recent Stephen King books, as you can see over here. And I've read, you know, I've read at least the last three most recent books. And I, I know one thing about them, which is that he always tries to go for this big, exciting plot. And, you know, these are good books. They tend to be really good books. I know a lot of great big Stephen King books that are fantastic. The Stand is one of them. I really, really, I quite enjoyed The Outsider, like I said before. If It Bleeds had a couple of good stories in it, but things like The Institute that I found to be these really thick stories that were meant to be really big and grand and have a lot of characters and stuff, I, these fell flat for me because I felt like Stephen King was sacrificing his own charm, his own 
in inert charm to make the story more exciting and more visually stunning in different ways and make the description more interesting, make the plot, make the magic in a new way. I felt like all of this was superfluous compared to the just inert charm of this guy writing a good story that he enjoys. And I don't know, maybe, maybe that's just me, but I thought that that was the best part of the story. It felt like he was really enjoying it. This was only 200 pages and every page of it, I just thought was a good page. It was all fluffy, it was all light. And I think that's what made it so good. This light fluffiness, maybe you wouldn't think so great, but this light fluffiness in the context of a King book allows him to really not bog you down with this heavy story, with this heavy prose and stuff like that. It, it's just a story that you can get through a page in a minute and not really have to think too much about it because you're enjoying the story so much. And I, I think that encapsulates my entire love for this book. And I've been doing a lot of thinking about what this book really means. And yeah, I don't really do that for Stephen King books. But for this one, I, I just thought it was so light that I feel like if I didn't come up with something that it was trying to say, I would feel like it's not that good of a book because it was a fun read. It was a super fun read. But if it doesn't impact me afterwards, it's basically, in my opinion, wasted time. It's just like entertainment, it's like watching TV and then forgetting what you watched, right? So I had to think about something that I thought that the story meant. And what it came down to me was something that was so obvious but something that you still have to consider nonetheless. Right up here it says, sometimes growing up means facing your demons. And this book is called Later, which means later in his life, essentially, in the context of the story. And I know that this is the most obvious thing on the planet. I know this, but I can't help but think of it as the most important part of the story. This is a story about growing up in the same way a lot of his other stories are about. And you can really, really see it. The context of how he talks and the way he acts changes so much over the course of the story. The way that we imagine him changes so much. And we see it in the context, especially in the context of his idea. And maybe maybe I shouldn't spoil this, but there is a power. There's, this guy has a power and like a secret power. And using this power as a, as a medium to look through the lens of him growing up makes it seem so interesting. Because while he's growing up, he does have this power. And this power impacts how he grows up. And the way that he grows up alongside this power teaches us things about the way we grow up. Things that we wouldn't normally see in a book about just casually growing up, like the Institute, where he does have a power in the Institute and he grows up during the Institute, but it doesn't really have the same oomph as this because that one is about growing up and he has this power and it's more of a plot-wise story. This one is a pure story about this one character because overall, it doesn't have a plot. It really doesn't have a plot. He just has a story about a guy growing up with this power. And I think, I, I guess that's the best thing I can come up with. And I, I, I know this is the most obvious thing on the planet later, but even Stephen King, like so many times during the story has emphasized this point later, 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 growing up, changing, seeing who you really are and trying to see the past in a new light, like looking back on with rose tinted glasses and the opposite of that, whatever the saying goes, that is the entire story. And that is a very simple, beautiful, eloquent way for King to write the story. And so with that being said, I'm rating this book a three out of five stars. It is by far one of the best Stephen King books I've read in the previous couple of years, maybe in the past five years. I don't know about Outsider yet. Um, I'll have to think about that. I know I rated that five stars, but this is definitely at least at the same level as that. The three stars is purely a rating of I enjoyed it. I really, really loved it. Now four stars would mean I loved it. This is a fantastic book. This is one of the best books I've read from King. And this is just not the case. As far as I can tell, this is an enjoyable, fun book. That he's just put out and I'm really really happy about this because this is the good direction that he should be going there's a new book coming out I think in August called Billy Summers and I cannot wait because this book has turned me back onto Stephen King after the Institute and if it bleeds have really made me feel like he's coming to a lower standard for himself and not only that but there's a new Stephen King book coming out in 2022 that is the third book in the Gwendy's button box trilogy uh, that is a problem because the first one, eh, I didn't really enjoy that much. Second one, I have not read because he's not the author of that. And the third one, I'm gonna have to read that next next year. So that's gonna be kind of annoying, but whatever. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below and comment what you thought of this book or what you thought of my review. I would love to have a conversation in the comments down below. That's super, super enjoyable for me. Also take a look at my channel if you enjoy any of the types of books that I read. Make sure you subscribe. Um, I review a lot of Stephen King books. I review them all as they come out. And I'm thinking of that I'm, pr I'm probably gonna get through all of these books at some point. And I've got a review for many, many of them. I think 25 right now. So you can also look at my channel for that. I've linked my Goodreads down in the description down below if you wanna follow me there to see what I'm reading right now. Uh, other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm really, really happy that you guys are sticking around and still enjoying my reviews. Um, and that being said, uh, I hope you guys have a nice day. I'll see you later.